The Vapotherm Precision Flow provides small prong high flow therapy support for patients in respiratory distress. This video will detail how to set up, use, and clean the Precision Flow device. Each Precision Flow comes with one main Precision Flow unit, one power cord, one O2 sensor cell, two Precision Flow inlet filter traps, one for air and one for oxygen, and finally, two Precision Flow hoses, one for air and one for oxygen. Let's start by getting to know the Precision Flow unit. The small panel on the back of the machine houses a MaxTech O2 sensor. This oxygen sensor monitors the gas mixture and signals any discrepancy between what is set and what is being delivered. The oxygen sensor calibrates at startup and every 24 hours while running. This sensor only requires changing about once a year and can be done by your biomed or clinical engineering department. The air and oxygen hoses are connected to gas inlet filter traps. These filters require changing once every six months. To connect the O2 sensor, first connect the air and oxygen to an approved source using Quick Connects. When connecting the air and oxygen hoses to the gas source, make sure that both inlet filter traps are pointing downward. Next, plug the power cord into a facility-approved outlet. With the unit door open, note where the disposable patient circuit, also referred to as the DPC, will be placed. Within the docking area are the heating plate and other optical sensor ports. The sensors monitor what type of DPC is installed, low flow or high flow, locks in the flow range depending on the type of DPC, water temperature, water level, water circulation, Inspect sensors to ensure they are clear. Wipe with 7090 alcohol wipe if cloudy. With the Precision Flow unit set up, it is now time to assemble and insert the disposable patient circuit. You will need a sterile water bag, a properly sized nasal cannula, and a grab-and-go DPC kit. Each grab-and-go DPC kit contains three components, the vapor transfer cartridge, or VTC, the disposable water path, or DWP, and the patient delivery tube. Note the large blue lettering that states high flow setup. This kit is specific for both pediatric and adult patient populations and is to be used with the adult and pediatric cannulas. The flow range for this kit is five to 40 liters per minute. The second kit, in large red lettering, states low flow setup. This is specific for the NICU neonatal population. It is to be used with only the premature, neonatal, and infant cannulas. The flow range for this kit is 1 to 8 liters per minute. Both disposable kits can be used for up to 30 days single patient continuous use before required replacement is needed. Use the following steps for setting either the high flow or low flow DPC. First, remove the vapor transfer cartridge from its individual package and remove the four rubber covers from the pegs. While holding the disposable water chamber by the handle, line up the four pegs of the vapor transfer cartridge to the four holes in the chamber and insert the cartridge by pushing firmly into place. It does not matter which way the cartridge is orientated. Next, remove the patient delivery tube from the packaging and locate the white two-pronged attachment at one end. Holding the disposable water path, flip it over and locate the insertion point with two holes at the side of the chamber. With the door open to the Precision Flow docking station, come down over the top, sliding the disposable patient circuit into place, making sure the heater plates are lined up, and push firmly down. Shut the door. Using aseptic technique, take an alcohol wipe, rub the tip of the water spike, and then spike the water bag. This is very important. Before turning on the unit, unclamp the spike adapter and let water fill the entire disposable patient circuit, approximately 200 milliliters of water. Visualize water falling into the disposable and starting to fill the delivery tube. This will take about 60 to 90 seconds. To turn on the precision flow, Locate the three controls on the front of the unit. The Run Standby button powers the unit on and also places it in standby. The Setting Control knob allows you to adjust the parameters. 
and the alarm mute button will intermittently silence alarms and also dim the display panel. There are three modes to the unit, sleep, standby, and run. The screen is currently blank with an amber light showing, indicating it is in sleep mode. The unit cannot be started from sleep. To put the unit in standby, simply rotate the blue control setting knob to illuminate the display. The three parameters of flow, FiO2, and temperature will now illuminate. Also shown is the corresponding cartridge indicator on the lower right-hand side, which will identify what type of disposable patient circuit is in place. To enter run mode, with the screen illuminated, simply press and release the run standby button. The machine will give a series of 10 beeps and begin to power up. At this point, the small light above the run standby button will change from amber to flashing green. During startup, one amber alarm indicator also illuminates. This is normal and is part of the Precision Flow's post-test. Let's focus on the light indicator above the run standby button. When the light indicator is a constant amber, that means the unit is in standby and there is no flow being delivered. When the light changes to a flashing green, the unit is in run mode and there is flow being delivered, but the set temperature has not been reached. When the light is a constant green, the unit is in run mode and flow is being delivered with all the parameters met. A flashing amber light indicates that the unit is in battery mode, and although the heater and pump shut down, flow will continue to be delivered to the patient for approximately 15 minutes. If we further review the Precision Flow unit's front display and features, you'll notice the central blue setting control knob. This knob controls all three parameters on the display screen. The FiO2 is controlled by a built-in electronic blender, which allows for precise FiO2 delivery to your patient between 21 to 100 percent. The flow is controlled by an integrated electronic flow meter, which allows for accurate flow rates between 1 to 40 liters a minute. The temperature can be adjusted between 33 to 43 degrees Celsius and allows the user to set a precise temperature for optimal therapy. To adjust these parameters, simply push the center blue knob until the item you wish to adjust flashes. Once the FiO2, temperature, or flow field flashes, then you can turn the knob to your desired setting. Once the selected parameters have been set, simply quit pressing the button and the unit will lock in the settings. With the unit now running, it is time to select the right cannula for the patient. Vapotherm manufactures eight different size cannulas for the patient population, five cannula sizes for the red NICU infant low flow setup and three cannulas for the blue high flow setup. The small bore design of the nasal prongs ensure adequate flush of CO2 from the upper airway dead space, and the shorter supply tubing maintains the heat and humidification of the breathing gas all the way to the patient. When choosing a cannula for any patient population, it is important to select a cannula that does not occlude 50% of the inner diameter of the patient's nares. Once the proper cannula has been selected, you may place it on the end of the delivery tube only after the set temperature is reached on the unit. It is also recommended for better patient compliance that you place the unit at a low liter flow and then increase to the desired setting after the cannula is on the patient. If at some point therapy needs to be intermittently stopped for any length of time, the proper procedure is to remove the cannula from the patient, then remove the cannula from the delivery tube, Hang the delivery tube on the white clip at the side of the unit. With the DPC still in place, turn all values to the lowest allowable settings. Do not put unit in standby or off. The unit must remain running. The DPC is good for patient length of stay up to 30 days, single patient use, while the unit is running. Once the therapy has been discontinued, we can now remove it from the patient and prepare it for the next patient. To do this, remove the cannula from the patient. Place the unit in standby by pushing, not holding, the run standby button. Clamp the water spike. Discard the entire disposable patient circuit, including from the cannula to the water bag. Yes, this includes the water chamber. Throw it away. 
using 70-90% isopropyl alcohol, 2% chlorine hydrochlorite sodium, 6% hydrogen peroxide, Kavi wipes, or Sani Cloth AF3 wipes, no bleach or cavicide disinfectants, wipe down the entire unit. The device is now clean and ready for the next patient. For more information on the setup, care, and maintenance of your Precision Flow, or for support, please visit the Vapotherm website.